Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin. It's very good to see you. Thank you very much for coming back again here to the channel. Today, we are checking out the EA Game Conference uh, for Gamescom. Uh, not really Games Conference, but... Ooh. Oh, they actually started a minute early. Ooh. <laughs> so, yeah, they're doing their sizzle reel. We'll let that play in the background. Obviously, we're here to check out the EA Conference for Gamescom 2017. We did the Xbox One uh, last night and this morning, and it's actually up and available for you to watch now if you want to check out it. It's uh, pretty much a two hour video, so it's a little bit uh, much to sit down and watch in one sitting, but let me just reduce it down for you. It's a whole bunch of ways to pre-order the Xbox One X and not that many games, only about six, seven games really put it across and they end up. I might do a shorter video just to kind of condense down what they said in the Xbox conference very soon, but um, instead we've got to immediately jump into this one and get this done and dusted. And I'll probably do a reduced down version of this after the broadcast as well. But at least now, you can at least see what EA have got for us. So let's jump into the main conference. Ooh, there we go. Smooth transition, baby. Oh, so good. So there you use uh, the last 50 seconds to kind of like amp everybody up. So let's see what they got. Show me what you... Oh, PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> this is like immediately when PlayStation since we're... we Sony are not doing a conference this year. At... Um, Gamescom, at all. So yeah, uh, how does it feel to kick me like you do? I'm a leather ball on the field and I'm on the end of your boot. I see you kick and throw me, you knock me around the field, I go back into the net, and then you show me how you feel. <laughs> I don't know why, but I actually decided to go off for that one. <laughs> yeah, so uh, FIFA of course, um, they're looking gorgeous games, like, I mean, literally, uh, I have not been following the series for a long while, but uh, with the story modes and the additions they've actually made to sporting games lately, uh, really at this point, I, I can understand why they think they can actually get away with doing eSports for FIFA, <laughs> even though <laughs> people would actually complain otherwise. But of course, uh, FIFA 18, uh, big, a big title, Europe, Gamescom, obviously they're going to lead up on that quite heavily, so... Let's see what Patrick Soderlerg... Soderluno? 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 Soderluno. Soderlund. I thought that was a no. can't wait for you to get hands on with it this week. So, welcome to Gamescom 2017. And welcome to Electronic Arts. This is our home here in Cologne for the next five days. 10,000 square meters and nearly 400 game stations ready for... Fuck, that's an awesome X-Wing! To start it off tonight, we're going to go deep into the gameplay. The next hour should be fun. Actually, a lot of fun. Should be fun. Actually, we didn't test it. We didn't do an audience test before. Development. We don't know. That means 6,000 game makers stretching across all platforms and all kinds of games. These are the teams like EA Vancouver who bring you FIFA and NHL. The NFL experts in Tiburon who are launching Madden NFL 18 on Frostbite Ooh, Frostbite Madden! this week. Or our shooter in action teams at Dice and Motive. The speed experts at Criterion and Ghost. Or our mobile studios like Fire Monkeys, Capital, and PopCap. We have Max. Hey, that's that's what you just remember that EA is all of these people you used to like. Not owned by one part one group of people. Creative Collective is pushing the boundaries for all of you our players and frankly you deserve nothing less it's in the That's game unless it's dlc or in the season pass, or it's coming out next month it's why we put risk versus reward gameplay at the heart of need for speed payback and of course revolution is coming to battlefield one from the dice studio we actually That's have 15 right. minutes of battlefield in our show here today we're advancing the state of art in games today massive new experiences sports like you've never seen it before. Sports! New beautifully crafted. And frankly, beautiful stories through our original program. And experience us, experiences optimized for competition to give you a chance to be the next FIFA or Madden or Battlefield star. Uh, I'm not too sure about this. And this is why we come to Gamescom. Because it's always, always about one simple thing. Playing. The best. <sighs> or selling the best in-game credits. 
And why not start with something epic? Star Wars Space Battles. We heard the feedback from our players asking for sp space battles. Well, more of the fighters like, why the fuck did you take it out of the yeah. one original remake that was going to be out? Join your squad, weave in between asteroids, fly through Imperial... I, I, this will be the exact same story I said whenever I was um, watching the EA3 conference for this kind of material. I was like, I can't get excited for Battlefront 2 because it's everything that should have been in Battlefront 1. And as much as it sounds and looks gorgeous... It was shallow as fuck when I was playing the beta and it didn't seem to get any more interesting. The involvement of a story mode in this that actually is canonical to the main movies now, which is going to be interesting, but I'm perturbed. I'm heavily perturbed. Fuck, I was, if that was going to be all they were going to show. Is this showing different locations, I imagine? We'll see for the rebels. Keep at it. Structural failure imminent. I'm on board with this. I mean, the vehicles were very, very twitchy in Battlefield One. For the Republic. Joy fleet, jet ahead. Bank hard, incoming. Pretty sure I got it. Damn. You cannot kill all the Sith. Ah, nice. So there'll be hero ships and villain ships specifically as well. Nice touches, nice touches. Wow, isn't that trailer absolutely amazing? Uh, it was all right. <laughs> Do you know like people like, they use the words amazing and beautiful and stunning? Is what we like, waiting for. I was pretty good, right? I'm Timmy. Yeah, I know. It was, wasn't it? All right, let's show you some more. Well, producer from Criterion, Tim, your reaction is exactly what we were going for when building the new Starfighter. Oh, that's good. It's great that you're paying me to do that then. Gamescom 2017. What have you guys brought to show us? Well, we've got four things. The first gameplay reveal of Starfighter Assault above the original trilogy, Planet of Fondor. All new class-based ship combat. Class-based ships. Ship vehicles from all three eras of Star hmm. Wars. And objective-based gameplay. All right, let me make sure we got this right. Class-based ships, hero vehicles, and objective-based gameplay. I can't wait to see it all here in the gameplay reveal of Starfighter. Assault. And hopefully, this is gonna be I can make it to the end featuring some of, the of my auto prompt Wars Battlefront game changers at the right time, Jack Frag, so I don't Star have to pause. HQ, Battlefront updates, and even myself. We actually got to go down to Criterion Studios and get to record this. Yeah, it was really great having everyone there uh, for an early look at the game. Yeah, and now we actually get to share it with the world. So let's get right into it. Why are you behind a desk? Take out those defenses or our bombers don't stand a chance. Hey. Okay, so let's see what the gameplay actually goes through. Like, so I suppose if they... I'm, I can respect a con like this kind of conference space where they're just going like, well, you guys are literally going to go out and play it in a second, but here, just check out what some of the gameplay is actually like. This is what we got running. What is the oh, and with commentary. Well, you can see the rebels need to take down the imperial. Which is ironic, because they're not doing exactly that. And the imperial light cruisers need to be destroyed. And in the empire, all they have to do is just make sure that they take out the rebel scum. That's right, just defend. Just like that, right wow. there, boom! An A-wing getting blown out of the sky by Narwhal Dave. So this is a new ship that we've never seen before in Star Wars Battlefront, the Tie Bomber. Uh, what is this class, and what does it do? Yeah, it's our new bomber class. It's heavily armored and armed to the teeth really great for taking down objectives. You can see here, like you were saying, it is a tank. It does a lot of damage. One of my favorite abilities that it has is the multi-rockets that, it, that it's able to shoot multiple rockets at multiple targets. Yeah, if you use those two abilities at once, you can have five missiles in the air. Five missiles. Look at it just tearing through these X-wings, these A-wings. Yeah, it's just getting pretty good. The job done. I mean, that's that's the thing that Battlefield and games did. Another or, ship that we've seen uh, the Battlefront game didn't actually have. But it's, it's uh, really wrong with the name of your form. It sounded it's like Star Wars. It looked like Star Wars. Class. Here we felt that a bit hmm, weird, well, but um, it's, it's, we kind of there was never no sense of context. And I mean, that, the, that, that's what these kind of games always have for me in general. Is that I don't I don't like the I don't I don't enjoy playing the same place over. Was that a fucking? That looked like Starship out of Star Trek, not Star Wars. Um, the I didn't enjoy the tie the tie bomber that's right on its tail. It's the repetition. The the 
the yeah. real sense yeah. of repetition that you got playing that game, especially if you're run around, running around the same normal. locations, waiting for the right icons to spawn at the right times the level. Like, the, it was there was a bit of a monotony in that, but um, was the story mode in this? It's got me interested enough that I might actually it'll be a rental for me to actually play through the story mode just because I enjoy Star I sorry enjoy Star Wars universe, if not actually a massive fan of it. But so they're kind of flexible. Flexible, but not flexible enough. Tommy T taking out these X wings. It's going ham right now. Again, in that Thai bomber, he is just—he's going to work. He's doing there it like it's his job. Oh, wait, no, it is. Wing, and he just got rammed by a Thai bomber. Sorry, Dave. That's not cool. Not at all. Now the rebels are definitely doing a lot of work right now. They are melting through those Imperial light cruisers. Those, uh, as you can see, X-Wing, like you said before, is there to take out those objectives, and the X-Wing is just melting through it. 15% left on this first phase. It looks like this Imperial Are they light literally... Sh I was down. wondering there, looking at that, going like, <laughs> that was a lot of long distance shooting. He was like, I'm just settling in. Nobody's anywhere near me. Now, Y-Wing, you said, was there to take care of the objectives. He's doing this bombing run. He's definitely just tearing this Imperial light cruiser apart. And there it goes, mm. the second one down. That's two, two. Yeah, they did their jobs there. On Damn the impressive. Second phase. Stay well, on target. This is the second phase work in Starfighter Assault or Fondor. The Rebels need to get into this tunnel and blow up all four shield projectors that are still protecting the dog. Okay, so, ooh. Ouch. You still have to watch out for those cinder turds, though. Yeah, they're still there. All right, Rob, so we've been talking about all these ships. We haven't really mentioned the hero ships. And here's our first sight at Darth Maul Scimitar. What is so unique about Ah, uh, rapid fire is fuck, man. <laughs> well, there's a reason you haven't seen him very much. Because he's invisible. He's a stealth ship. I see, okay. And now here's another hero ship, Poe Cameron's Black One X-Wing. Rob, what's so special about this, this X-Wing? What makes it so different? Well, it's, it's black. I, I got that part. What's different about it? Well, Poe's a natural leader, so he's got an area of effect that can help his friends out around him. Now we also well, that makes sense. Um, AoEs that actually kind of give everybody else a bonus to accuracy or he repair speed and stuff. Here is another Save one! Ship in Star Wars Universe, Boba Fett's Slave One. Rob, what do we have to watch out for with this bounty hunter ship? Pretty much everything. It's slave One. He's got concussion missiles, he's got iron cannons, and a seismic charge. Seismic charge. What's so dangerous about a seismic charge, Rob? Well, in this closed environment, it's going to get a lot of kills. So it does a big old area effect burst. Hopefully we'll... Nice. That's it. That's All right, one. so I like this, like, she can, like, a mild dogfight as you're ducking up and down. That, that, so whenever you get into that interior that part, you're literally getting, kind of, like, there's somebody that's shooting straight down a corner, you're actually standing up above, and you just swap area. places as you go back and forth. Ah, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, the, the space combat is... Like, that's one of the things where if I was playing this, I might just sit and play the space combat. Or I might be better off just playing a space combat game, but this doesn't look bad at all. It doesn't feel too twitchy either. It does, like... If he's going to be always a thing, but it doesn't feel like uh, you're going to just boost yourself into a wall, especially with some of the slower, heavier class vehicles. Small scimitar and also goes after that Imperial bomber as well. Now there's not much left on the shield projector, but we do see Han Solo's money Falcon for the first time up close and personal. Rob, what is uh, what, what do we have to look for with the, the Millennium Falcon? You can see right here, Hans Falcon's taking an awful lot of damage, and that's what he's great at. He's a brawler. Brawler indeed. Yeah, that is a lot. Got, oh, but it's just the fact that he's hero. moving, it looks like he's moving really he's slow, but it's like he, he's, he's extremely versatile because that ship is just fucking twisting itself back around again. Parsecs is a measure of distance, not a measure of time. A chance to uh, to take out the shield projectors, the seismic charge going off again. You've got the Y Wings doing the bombing runs, taking out the shield projectors so they can move on to the next phase. You have two percent left. There's 50 reinforcements. Uh -huh. left. Well, they you learn to get followed in the tunnel. You're like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm done. No, no. As they're going through, <laughs> dragging them, boom. The shield projectors. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to take out Slave One. The rebels should still have this. The though. rebels, this I think so. They've got 40 reinforcements left. Two percent left on the shield projectors. I think they're going to get it. Now we're getting a better look at Han Solo's Millennium Falcon. See that was a nice shot, actually. Uh, well. Again, this, well, the, the Battlefield, uh, Battlefront uh, series, uh, Star Wars Battlefront, Battlefront look and sound fantastic. Oh, that was actually kind of, that was, that was gnarly to actually drive through the little space in between. final phase. Now, Rob, let's do a quick recap. We had phase one, where the Rebels had to destroy the Imperial Light Cruisers. Then in phase two, they had to destroy the shield projectors. And phase three. And now we get to move on to phase three. What's that all about? The Star Destroyer is still getting power from the dock, so the Rebels need to disable the power couplings 
leaving the reactor core vulnerable. Now, it, once the reactor core is vulnerable, is it always available for destruction, or, or do they have to do anything else? They've got about a 30-second window to do as much damage as they can. And then the and then the couplings will then come back. That's down. right. All right. Right. So, so again, you knock out something, and then. then the attack, the knockouts on the attack, so you actually have your team split two ways where they're wa they're floating waiting to attack whenever they get the opportunity. You boost off to it after breaking the couplings. Oh shit, that's a lot of fucking I don't want to give points. I don't want to tell him the odds, but he's he's got to watch out right here. Like four or five bits, you have to shoot down again. Ah, uh, well, I mean, suppose it, it's fast enough combat and needs to give the defenders a decent chance. What was that? Oh, that was um, Flaubin dropping or down. On the rear of the Millennium Falcon, they keep on getting those locks. Multiple missiles going after him. I don't think he's going to be able to make it. He's evading pretty well he's so far. Doing a great job, but unfortunately, no. The Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <is> <laughs> <top> <laughs> <top of the fire. laughs> spins out of the sky. There's a scream coming after. Trying to take them out. He is an ace pilot. Looks like he's doing a lot of work right now. As you see, he's used dual proton torpedoes, taking out the first high bomber. He's getting a little bit of damage. So they're actually giving us a full playthrough, which is going to be about 10, 15 minutes of the entire conference dedicated to this. I'm curious what they're going to do with other games, or how many games they're playing. Is the cover as far as this? Damn, how far am I actually in the broadcast, right? It feels, the match feels longer watching rather than actually does the play, I don't imagine. And it looks like the Rebels have to go back and, and try to get those couplings off of the... They'll get another chance. They will get another chance. Stay on target. That Millennium Falcon is doing a lot of work. Now, this is something we haven't really seen uh, yet. Rob is those those Corvettes that have been kind of floating around doing some damage to the Empire. Let's talk a little bit about those. Well, I think that was the problem. The Empire didn't see them in Phase 1, and now they're in Phase 3, and it could be a lot of trouble for them. So these Corvettes are AI-controlled ships, and they are able to help the Rebels push through the different Right! Phases. That's right. Okay. They'll creep through the levels, doing damage to Starfighters and objectives. You know, well, okay, so the Corvettes and are and your kind of like your... Uh, your spawn bases, I suppose, more than anything else. So well, Rob, you guys have done a fantastic job. Just so they're a CF, they're a, a natural CF spawn, and they push further and further in to go along. We, we built them all from the ground up, and they're all unique, every ship. That is so awesome. Again, back on board the Millennium Falcon, taking out those cinder turrets. It looks like the power couplings have been disabled again. The reactor core is going down. Boom! And that's it. It's been melted away. The Star Destroyer is gone. Nicely done. Victory for the Rebels. That was, that was quite watchable, quite enjoyable. <laughs> then you get to watch your explosions at the end. That was well worth it. So yeah, I'm actually glad they actually went to the bother of showing a full playthrough of one of the missions. Or one of the uh, multiplayer so uh, battle runs for the Battlefront. Four hours a lot of space wells. That was alright. And I'm yawning. Is just a part of Star Wars Battlefront. I'm doing that a lot lately. Yeah. Just player, uh, mild exhaustion course, with what I'm actually looking at. Iconic heroes from across all three eras. Also, make sure to follow the EA Star Wars social channels for exclusive looks at new Starfighters and more awesome space combat footage. Rob, also thanks to you for being here with me on the desk, and also a big thanks to your crew over at Criterion for bringing in this amazing mode. Of course. Thanks so much for having us. An awesome. Awesome game mode. And thanks to you guys at home for watching the gameplay world premiere, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 Starfighter Assault mode. So, yeah, uh, online space mode. Okay. Fair play. Uh, well described. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, BMW on the other side. I was going like, why is there BMW? I just dropping in the middle of this. Hey, Bruno. Hey, Marcus. Hey, good to see you, man. Uh, what is this That's for? That's a new BMW M5. Never seen it peak until now. It certainly has the looks to be in a Need for Speed game. All right. But how does it drive? I'm going to show you. All the right. Need for Speed uh, Fast and Furious game mode is going to be interesting. Which, like, it looks cinema like. Like, uh, like a film that was actually in action and happening, but I, I'd still rather just be playing a burner game, to be honest. Really? I'm, I'm going to have to sit here and talk entire way through this, because this is just a BMW ad. Nothing to do with uh, electronic arts in any way, shape, or form. Stop making us think it's like, car is sexy, mm, yeah! Talk about the games. Cool. Talk about the games. It's all about going Talk about fast. the games. Audio going down. Do you know what? Fuck him. No sound for you at all. Don't don't watch it. Don't care. <sighs> Obviously, they're um, probably going to do the whole transition, the live action ad into the video game footage. 
Something like that. That's what I imagine is going to happen because they're getting this all this set up because it'll look really impressive. Bang, bang, buggy, the bug, bug, buggy. So, yeah, the Need for Speed game looked great at E3. It actually looked it looked enjoyable. It didn't look bad. Um, doing this makes me less interested, <laughs> ironically enough, because do the movie stunts in the game. I know these are movie stunts. I have, I've, it, you end up looking like a cheesy version of Fast and the Furious. Hey! Need for Speed Payback advertised via live action trailer. So I'm assuming they're going to actually bring somebody out. Yeah, there we go, for Need for Speed. They transport him all the way from Italy. The man hasn't slept. The man hasn't peed. He's Boxman! Right, so um, welcome to the new episode of uh, Grand Tour. The Richard Hammond has actually been transported in a steel box since Italy to the set of the new show, and apparently has gone the wrong way uh, and has ended up in Cologne for Gamescom. It does. It feels like the kind of thing they literally they could actually joke and literally have. Him get out of like one of the guys from Grand Grand Tour get out of the car like oh sorry 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 we're in Germany we know we're to be back in England that was the real Need for Speed moment you delivered right there happy you like it man well uh, welcome everyone to this segment of Need for Speed Payback uh, but also welcome to the world premiere of the all new 2018. BMW M5. Microsoft thought they're impressive with their Porsche we got the BMW M5. And yeah, apparently it's a great car, it's a really comfortable car to ride around in, fair play. Well, I'm really excited, the world finally gets to see our all new BMW M5. Believe me, this car is a game changer when it comes to driving dynamics. Oh, so we're well in the car, you're here for Gamescom. This year. For that reason, we are super proud to present the BMW M5 in style. BMW has no okay. Fuck me! Okay! Fuck me! the car through a video game until now. Well, we're obviously thrilled to be part of that BMW history. And while this shut car up is until next year, uh, on November 10th, you can drive it exclusively in Need for Speed Payback. And we are here because the support and dedication of your fans have made Need for Speed. I'm just getting tired of this. I really am, actually. Like, uh, this has literally all they've said is the word Need for Speed Payback six times and had it inside a box that said Need for Speed Payback. And I don't care. Don't care, yay. Don't care. Don't care if you say anything important or interesting. No. Waste of time. I hope you can mail it back because fuck, we blew up the box and came in. I didn't even keep the receipt. So, so uh, we don't know what we're doing here. We only had a car to sell. So, uh, uh, come to the game footage. This game is an action driving blockbuster. It's complete with the hottest cars doing the most insane things behind the wheel that you can ever imagine. Really? But out there on the roads of Fortune Valley, you need to watch your back because everyone wants to take you out. And that Oof. Is I'm getting into Jesse from my anger. I'm actually feeling back. about this. Top star right. The stakes have never been higher. An infamous cartel called The House is bankrolling the police, which would allow the reinforcements to expand and include new enforcer vehicles like the Rhino and kill switches and helicopters. Right, so obviously the um, are dying you from many different ways. I get to see out your car and escalate in various ways from cars to helicopters to big massive trucks, super powered, enough to actually chase after you. And you have to pull stunts and do a big caper and since you do the last 15 minutes of Gone 60, no not the last 15, the last 20 minutes to half an hour of Gone 60 seconds over and over and over again. Just like the other 60 minutes of Gone 60 seconds. So, is I'm showing that M5 now? Looking good though. 
Looks a little bit. It doesn't look like it's going slow. It looks like it's actually like intentional, but. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So it goes the uh, Gone 60 Seconds car. Uh-oh, that's terrible. He had to slow down and stop. Right. So a snazzy a uh, pre-rendered cutscene. Cool. We have November 10 date, straight date coming towards us. Um, I don't. I, I'm assuming that we'll all have those like cinematic moments of our own when we're dodging around multiple vehicles, and we'll be able to clip that together. Well, that's right. The Sims 4 is coming to console. Now you can make all your friends and watch them slowly fall apart while you build them into a house that has no toilets, no kitchen, and no doors or windows. You can be your own Saw character. You can dress your hair any way you want, without the reality of having to grow it. You can do all the things you've wanted to do in life, but don't have the time to do as you play a game where you do all the things you do in your life. It's The Sims, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello. I, uh, thank you. I'm Lindsay Pearson, and I am so happy to be at Gamescom here with you to share The Sims. Since launching The Sims 4, every <coughs> Axis has been focused on giving our Sims more to do, more to So, um, it always reminds me back to the early days of Sims whenever somebody did a review of the Sims H&M clothing bundle. Where it was like somebody went to them and I was like, I, I don't know if a PC gamer or a PC pro or whatever it was, but it was essentially a magazine that just went like, yes, yes, this is all based around two guys with very unhappy haircuts and very expensive suits on them standing at some marketing meetup. And just one of them looks, one of them happens to work for H&M, one of them works for like the DLC department of EA, and they just looked at each other and across the room their eyes met and they felt an immediate longing, a longing to be inside each other. H&M wanted to be inside the Sims expansion boxes, and the Sims wanted him inside him too. And we would never, ever forget about our PC Mac players as we continue to make the lives of your Sims richer and bigger through all new expansions, game packs, and stuff packs. In fact, for everyone here at the show, you're invited to play the Sims on all of these platforms. So come by to get your hands on the Sims Mobile, no. the Sims 4 on console, and our no. new pack, the Sims 4 toddler stuff. No! No, 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 no. I to add that I know you've been waiting for, and I'm thrilled to officially announce that this fall, PC Mac players worldwide can enjoy the Sims 4 Cats <gasps> Oh my god! <laughs> we can have doggos? Cats and dogs are a You can have cheeseburgers too? Because just like in real life, they make our lives richer and cuddlier and sillier. In real life! We, we have cats. I'm a cat person. But they're loving and playful. And of course, the internet is full of... You know what? Uh, the, all of my anger on The, the Sims is... Or promise to be I don't know. It, it, it's, it, it's a little bit... Um, we have a special celebrity guest. I'd envy more than anything else. Like, so the fact that they actually built life simulator. Like, the Sims has done some cool shit uh, over the years. Personally, I actually prefer the idea of like interaction between characters, like a, a, a Sims multiplayer in a lot of ways. But uh, that just didn't work. The Sims Online field of miserably on its arse just pretty much became a, a escort service and that sort of thing. Oh, oh, don't do that. Hi, Jess. Hi, everyone. Why? This is Jess. She works with me on The Sims. And thank you for hosting this little guy. Jiffom, we are so excited that you could join us to announce this expansion pack. <laughs> so, Jess, I know you've been hanging out backstage, getting to know him, maybe getting to be friends. Yeah, we're totally... No! Excited. He's been showing me some of his signature moves out back, but I have to admit, we've also been taking a lot of selfies. Well, that is what I would do as well. This is... <laughs> the dog looks so happy. That's okay, but I'm, I'm actually mild stunned silence. They actually brought a dog out on. 
No, there's no oh, need to translate that. That is international right there. <laughs> just, give me the goddamn treat already! How do you like the food here? Give me that treat! <laughs> He's very excited. I see that. <laughs> now, you were just amazing. Your Where's the goddamn treat? So, okay, I'm super impressed. Hey! Especially hey! Because I know you hey! Have a really long flight. Hey! How do you feel after all your travel? Give me my goddamn treat! Oh, I know. I'm a little tired, too. But my work is not done yet. I have to tell all these folks about the game. Good. So Damn it! If you want to go Maybe back, do two tricks before I give me a treat. Little dog bone. I don't blame you. But before you go, let's capture your big. Bitch, I know we got more in there. Yeah, just come up here. Sit up, <laughs> good boy. Oh, oh yeah. Ready? Just, just follow me. Really? Ready? Really? Really? You need to take a photograph. I'm wearing this shirt, and you want to take another photograph. Great. Oh, great. And you know all my friends are going to be laughing at me. Thanks for coming out to help me talk about this. You better give me more nibs. <laughs> I look forward to seeing more dogs and cats. Like you, in The Sims 4, Cats and Dogs. <laughs> and of course, he has a full Instagram page and all that. Look at his floofy head. His floofy head that doesn't look like it should fit on his uh, shoulders. So obviously, uh, yeah, pets and animals living together. And as I mentioned, I'm a bit of a cat person. I have two of them, and I love to recreate them in the game. But whether you're a dog person or a cat person, with what is so essentially, it is a, a breeds and breeds and coloring. Oh, all right. So they actually are allowing you to manually color the animals as well. So you can actually get you if you do have your own real dogs or of a certain breed, then you can actually draw them in. And just like in real life, our cats and dogs are so much more than their pedigree. By giving them traits, you can make each pet truly unique, or you can adopt a cuddly stray found around our brand new world and discover their personality as you can. Aww. When you've found that perfect fluffy partner, you can train them, dress them up in super cute costumes, and bask in their undying love and devotion. Why it's would you put a cone of shame on a dog in a digital world? Oh, just to watch him knock that off? Actually, that would be the adorable part. Dogs, we have one more dream job to cross off that list. Your sims can become a vet. Ah, uh, right. Well, I suppose actually, even if you don't do the whole pets thing yourself, to actually become a vet in game as a part of the expansion is a nice touch. Because if that, that if they're going to add the dogs and cats and do it, at least in, it actually applies into the job system. It, that's the reason why I like look at things that end up actually being annoying because they're actually just like jobs, or they're just uh, sorry, not jobs. They're just packs of stuff that actually show up in your in your stores again. Then you said you're going to go. I have to work in game to be able to buy these things. That's the reason why I played around with mods and stuff with the first one maybe, and that was it. Now you too can have a fluffy companion. If you're willing to give Joe's two dollars a month, we'll make sure that none of these digital puppies or cats are ever left alone. If a dog is not just Christmas, he's for the entirety of your digital lifespan. Remember, spay your pets, neuter your dogs, and take good care of them. Was that actually like she got bad news about her dog? That's fucked up! <laughs> Alright, so they're actually gonna get they actually have personalities for the dogs. Alright, so like literally they are they integrate them in as family members. That is this is adorable. I'm like not I'm not a fan of the game type in general, but this is like categor categorically adorable. Categorically, dogagorically. <laughs> the Sims Four, cats and dogs. It'll be raining money. <laughs> Again, everyone. By now, you have probably heard talk a bit about EA Originals, our program to help small independent studios bring uniquely innovative and memorable games to all of well, them. Well, that's cool. EA Originals has been live for a little bit over a year now, and it's been an intense year. We have literally talked to hundreds of studios worldwide and listened to tons of pitches. Personally, this has been one of my favorite programs. Mostly because we can get like people who will work for like 120 hours a week for nothing. <laughs> it's amazing. We don't have to buy their company. <laughs> it reminds me constantly why I love 
games so much. Earlier this year in Los Angeles, we showed you a way out. A way out did look pretty impressive. Am I actually quite excited about that? Joseph Farris and his team really have put their heart and soul into that game. Seeing the reaction at EA Play made them even more excited. And I didn't know that was... Yeah, I mean, I suppose they probably got a lot of feedback because it was their first presentation mode. Today, we want to bring you back into the world of FIA. From the Zoink studio... In Fae Hamburg, or Fee? Fee, Fae, Foe, fuck it. I believe I... Pissed in a bucket. ...reminded us that everything is connected. They have created a game where the magic and beauty of nature and all its creatures come alive. We want everyone to play and experience this game. So we're going to give it away for free? Bringing it to PC and consoles, including the Nintendo Switch. Thank you. Yep, come on to everything. So let me introduce you to creator director Andreas Bayer to take you deeper into the world of fear. I, I, I said it again there and I didn't get it. Did he say a fair, fair, fear, fear? Hello everyone. <laughs> we are so excited to be here at Gamescom and share with you more. Dude, you look casual as fuck and I like it. It's been absolutely fantastic to get the full support from EA to finally be able But man, seriously, you should have probably gone with like on. You know, like just, just, just like a, a, a sports top that actually tighten, pulls everything in rather than just layer light tooth uh, like like layers. I grew up in the countryside, having the forest as my playground. Unlike our character Fear, I wasn't swift and agile. I was a rather clumsy kid uh, who was terrible at climbing trees. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. It is kind of funny to look at, though. Time to explore and to be curious without being interrupted. I wanted to make a game that let players explore a world at their own pace, not having the game pushing them forward. Having that same freedom I had as a kid. Running through the fields. Time to figure things out. I wanted players to find their own path because when you do, it becomes your own personal experience. Eh, it's starting very open worldy for a platformer. Living thing, almost like a creature of its own. It can be both light and beautiful, or dark and scary. Not whether or not we programmed it to be a cave or a treetop. There is part of that duality. Our team at so fantastic team at Swing are working hard at the game. <laughs> are working hard at the game, and we plan to release it early 2018. Good. It will be available on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. And just in case you want to play this game out in nature, I don't know if Patrick told you, we will also release it on the Nintendo Switch. And now, I'm really happy and proud to show you more of our game. Yay! Gameplay! So after his basic explanation, we're nice to see a little bit more of the actual game. Through the high pines and the whispers of the forest, it was said when the dangers came, a new cry could be heard. The song of a cub. Oh. Born to sing in full voice. A song of all alike. Ah, uh, so they're communicating with each other. You gather the animals. To break the silence. To heal the forest of life. To take the shadows. To be cunning and sly. To stop the evil. The silent ones. And make the world a home again. That's how the story goes. This looks gloriously... It looks wonderfully cute. It looks very uh, distinct and sharp and easy to distinguish things. It doesn't seem to blend uh, all of its stuff into one single tone. Each of the places and locations seem to have their own colored palettes. This is this is quite wonderful. I actually really like the look of this. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. That's cool. Um, yeah, so first game of the EA conference that I actually give a shit about. Uh, that was actually kind of cool. Uh, I've seen previous footage of it, but um, that really kind of like lifted me for it. 
Yeah, I'm gonna get you down. We got a tune on the back of the ground. We're gonna fight and we're gonna sing on now. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom. We keep them with the booms. Yeah, sorry, I just, I'm doing that to avoid copyright strikes. <laughs> I apologize for the additional singing. Hello, everyone. Hopefully, I'm actually booming enough over the top of them. I didn't realize to double check that. Yes, I am most of the time. Today, I'm excited to be here at Gamescom in Cologne to tell you how. To what? To whom? To when? So I'll start with competitive. We are working on a new mode that will be as intense to watch as it is to play. It's a completely new way to play Battlefield. Okay. We are developing this together with our players, some of which have been working with us at our studio. I.e. as free game testers. For one thing and one thing or only. Ambassadors. Competition. And starting next month, Battlefield 1 players can play it through a closed alpha. We call it Battlefield 1 Incursions. Right. This is competitive the battlefield way. Alright. So 5v5. So this is for competitive 5v5 combat. Battlefield is finally getting a competitive mode. It's been asked for for a really long time. It's something DICE has been working on with the community's feedback. Nobody's heard about it until now. It starts with creating a game that the community loves. It's super early in production, but we want to get out there to the players and bring them in. Yeah, so literally what they want is a 5v5 elimination and COD slash, the way um, a really amazing what, experience. essentially a tactical, tactical shooter where runners are played very quickly because you get one life, that's it. Nothing short of amazing. It takes the teamwork of Battlefield and takes it to a whole new level. Five people on one side, five on the other, fast strategic gameplay. It's extremely important for the game to be just as much fun to watch as is to play. And that starts with the changes that we've made to the scoring system. What we get is a much more intense experience where every point matters. But that's the point of the game is to win. I can get a little competitive sometimes. Yeah, I, I don't know if ever, like, I mean, this is definitely not my game style. I think if anybody watched my video for um, America's Army Proving Grounds the other day, I just kind of talked about this a little bit, just being the, the series I don't massively, like the, the individual game types I don't massively enjoy. Um, I know I'm going to die. I'm going to die quick. I'm not going to have a brilliant KD in any way, shape, or form in any of the bigger games. And especially in Battlefield, I've, I've never, ever been decent at these games. So, um, obviously it doesn't interest me at all. I'm I, I'm probably, I will never buy this game. But um, if you're interested in the idea of a 5v5 battlefield experience, with a much, I'm assuming much more truncated maps, like really, really like locked down to like a series of buildings, so you have a lot of lighting quarters and space you can hide in, but still having some of the vehicles, obviously, which uh, does, does feel like there'd be a, a distinct disadvantage to some people, so I'm assuming they mustn't like, spawn in very easily, or you have to get to them first. Anyone could have that heroic moment. Anyone could pull off a massive play to turn the game around, and that adrenaline feeling that you get is incredible. I'm really looking forward to seeing this out in the wild. You competitive experience on battle field. So close alpha for these kind of missions are all going to be about in September. For you guys that are in Battlefield One already on PC and consoles. I'm sure there will be a EA uh, sign up for that. For Probably already online. Next, get ready for the second. And of course, in the name of the Tsar, coming out soon. In the name of the Tsar, this is where players get to go to the frozen battlefields of World War One's Eastern Front. So obviously, this was brought up during the EA conference last year. Uh, not last year, like during, well, what the, I think they did say it last year, but they just kind of like. Talked about it recently in the last EA, as in like this is this is when it's coming out. This is what we're going to be doing with it. This is what it all contains. Now, you don't have to wait that long to get a taste. For our premium plus players, you can play the first map right now. 
have to give applause again. I have to give applause to some sort because they'll be like, oh, for the paid pe the people who are willing to pay a monthly fee to play your fucking game are getting the, the first map right now. Great. Our third expansion is coming this December, and the fourth is coming early next year. December and next year, so... In just a moment, right. right here at Gamescom, and for those of you who are watching online, we will showcase a live 64-player Conquest match on the Russian Revolution map that you get to see for the first time. Good grief. For those of you who have yet to join us on the battlefield, now is the best time to get in. You will get all the content that we have released so far and all the good stuff that we have coming. All in one complete package. Then Dabby Dozy. Today, and it's called Battlefield 1 Revolution. Right, so they are selling everything that's actually available already and you get a season pass in it. All right, so, uh, yeah. I suppose essentially it's, it's needed for games that actually do expand like this, but... It's all just a reason, excuse to actually like put a, a new um, RRP on the models, and then those like, eventually we'll see like, the original battlefield or battle, battle yeah, the yeah, original battlefield without actually being expanded or anything else, sitting in like a humble bundle for a couple of bucks, and now we'll get more people playing it from the base model of it, and maybe they'll expand it further so they get the upsell on it. So, uh, marketing and money plans not actually for our benefit in any way, shape, or form. But sure, to sell us a sell us a package deal for um, Battlefield for anybody who is a massive. It would be a the people who are Battlefield One fans. I'm sure you're already fucking paying and bought up to this point anyway. And if you're a person who has been on the fence, what was it about this that might have actually made you change your mind? Tell me in the comments. Talk about Battlefield One. I am so excited to be here. We've been talking a lot about Revolution, and I can't wait to show you guys what we've been. We've been talking a lot about Revolution, not to do with the game, just uh, back in America. You know, people have been talking a lot about it. Battlefield commentators and uh, casters. How you doing? I am doing fantastic, especially after seeing that. Now, we have a lot of information to go through, and we're going to do some quick recaps. One of those things will be incursions. This is the new competitive mode from DICE. I'm really excited to say that this is going to be coming next month in Closed Alpha. That's right. And we've also talked about Battlefield 1 Revolution. Uh, this is, if you're a new player, the most complete package. So you get the base game, you get all, you the, get all the things, and all the things we're going to get, and it's all going to be included. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really think I don't need to have this explained to me again right after watching the trailer. Get that via the Battlefield 1 Premium Pass, which, as you say, includes In the Name of the Tsar. That's right. So now we're about to jump into the match. We have 64 Oh, players. shit, are we going to have to watch it? Oh. And we have them playing the movie. Right, I thought it was kind of cool for so we're about to jump in. Star Wars, but I'm not cool with this as much. Winter, and we are in the middle of the Russian Revolution. So we have okay. the army facing off against the White Guard. 64 player, okay. Battlefield Chaos. Let's see what happens. So this map is called Zarishan, right? Uh, Saracen. Saracen. Yes. 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 Saracen? So first thing to note about this map is it is a small urban map. It's going to be very infantry focused, but as we can see, there's already a tank on play. And this is going to play a big part in the map as you see as we go along here. That I believe you can only get one tank per, per faction, is that correct? That's right. Each team only gets one tank, uh, so it's going to be a critical part of each match. And as you can see here, this is a very unique tank. This is not uh, this is not a Russian tank. Russians were known for their armored cars during World War One. Uh, this is a is a Mark V. It's a British tank. In 1919, they started to support the Russian Revolution. See, there you go. That actually, the that I do want to point this out is the kind of commentary I actually like getting because I was not like I have no idea what the fuck this is about. So uh, yeah, tell me more. So very very small map, and uh, a lot of action. I imagine is going to be happening around that B site. That's right, yes. And as we know, and for those who don't know, uh, Conquest is all about capturing those flags. That's your objective. You need to go... Just keep capturing, just keep capturing. Uh, the kills will also count for you, but uh, this is uh, this is what you're, what you're going for. 
Yeah, this is, the, uh, this is the, bat the, the classic Battlefield 1 mode. And actually, just on screen now, I think this is one of the new weapons that's coming with this expansion pack. Yes, this is the Perino. And it looks like we also pulled out the Obrez. Uh, but yeah, this is the Perino. It's, uh, it's also dressed up in the new skin, the Fabergé. The Fabergé? I'm looking at it going like, that's a yeah, fancy as fuck gun for World War One. That coming, right? That's right, yeah. It's, uh, it's so I'm assuming Fabergé is actually going to be always the um, jewel-encrusted, gold-encrusted yeah. lunatic yeah. version of one of the guns. And now we have one of probably the best uh, shotgunners up. It was uh, Jack Frags up there, but now we switched over to Darkness here, who is uh, once again going to be using that new LMG. And you can see him trying to get as much ammo out to his uh, teammates there to cap over onto the C flag. Now, this is something that uh, we have seen in previous games where, you know, that B site's so hard to take that you do have people going in for the flanks. And uh, now it's <coughs> interesting to see how the, uh, uh, the light guard actually uh, come back at this. Yeah, because as you say, yeah, so the Red Army falling behind here a little bit, but I, I, capture flag I can get why people side. really get into watching this with high level play. Um, on a map that you wouldn't even know, you can't like see this is going to be a lot of chaos. I don't think these guys know this map that well either. They're just finding their blind points to work around and keep themselves alive. The most contentious point is going to be B in the Cathedral of Light in the center of the map. You can see some of the uh, the more flatter areas around the Cathedral of Light here, but obviously a lot of cover. As That's well. crazy. <laughs> People standing on two sides. Well, you might want to stop. I have the higher ground. No, Anakin. I have the advantage here. Rudimentary trenches, and that's something to note. On the eastern front, they didn't spend a lot of time digging those trenches like they did on the western front during World War One. So that's showcased here. So uh, we've also seen a lot of the basically destruction buildings that are kind of torn down. How much extra, or, uh, you know, destruction can the player have as uh, on this map? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, not a whole lot. There's going to be some. You'll see a little bit of what we call micro destruction. But uh, the, the hard cover that we're seeing is stuff that we wanted to keep in game, keep the game balanced, make sure that you stay safe. You're not doing battlefield evolutions anymore? Your objectives. Now, I think I'm right in saying here that the uh, the A capture point is uh, heavily infantry focused, right? <laughs> yes, it, it is. It is within those ruins of the of the former neighborhood, and it's going to be hard for a tank to get those lines of sight. But as you can see there, there's a there's a sort of a large roadway through the middle of it. But if they try to branch off down maybe one of the smaller alleyways, which they can get down, that but there's infantry everywhere. It's going to be really tight, and you might find yourself with a with a mine in your way. See down here at the bottom of the screen, one of the machine guns. It does look nice actually seeing the battlefield from a really high perspective. Like that looks cool to watch actually. Use of cover. That's an indestructible piece right there. Right now, though, a massive wave coming in from that B site to try and push uh, those players back <clears> into their alpha flag. But this is uh, pretty interesting right now because we do have that bottleneck that you were talking about, but it's kind of on the reverse. Uh, they, they can't really break out into it. That tank maybe needs to get a little bit more aggressive, try and push on in there. But uh, they are just having one heck of a time here. Yeah, the Red Army are trying to push in, but as you could see in a, a couple of shots back, the uh, the White Guard are sitting in that first line of trenches. There's about seven soldiers in there, just sort of keeping this tank from pushing forward. You can see with the explosives coming. Oh, out nice! The They're kind of keeping it at bay because too many infantry around a tank, it, it will take it down. That's right. Looks like we had just entered into the uh, Cathedral of Light here, and we're hopping on the window. <laughs> Yeah, but here we can actually see inside, and this is something I think we should talk about because it's actually a beautiful building inside there. Yeah, a lot of work was put into that building. Uh, That's kind of like mean, the their pride in rap uh, recreation of real life battlefields uh, is quite uh, honestly it's impressive. Really beautiful. Uh, here we are with the. Uh, this is the double barrel shotgun. We should, should be able to get a little bit of action with it here. That's right. And one on I'm right in thinking that you can fire both shells at once with this thing if you want to. Yes. <laughs> That's like a double dose of pain right there. Absolutely, and it's fantastic for taking down the cavalrymen, cavalrymen as well. But uh, right now, oh, we have another new gun right here on screen. This is from the medic class, I believe. That's right. It's the Fedorov Avtomat, and this one is really unique in that it allows you to be able to choose your firing type. So you can go uh, burst or you can go single shot. We have a little switch on it to the noise to make a choice. And we are starting to see right now the score kind of pulling Ooh, apart. Oh, nice shot. That's a nice takedown. Yeah, but we can see the white guard pulling away just a little bit in terms of score here. And so yeah, this match is going to go on for a while. Um, most of the game so far. Got a feeling this is going to take me over the R mark on this video. Here's a perspective on Battlefield. Tell me something outside of the beta test that I had on it. Um, I personally found that it was very unbalanced for new to experience right FPS players is it is Battlefield the, the Looks like they are gonna be able high to end now, but, uh, casual play on that, that game of that particular genre now, because like I do not feel comfortable or 
knowledgeable enough you to be safe in any way, shape, or form at any point inside the combat of a Battlefield game. Just in my personal here, feeling, but oh, nice ever since um, probably three, Battlefield three. Yeah, like I, I, I played playing it with friends of mine, and I always, always, oh, I did. It. I always felt like I, no matter what, I was the one being carried by the group. But um, occasionally, I would get a couple of good kills. But I never ever felt satisfied by the gameplay in any way she performed just because it's a labor shooty bangs and positioning yourself and I'm going like, ah, I don't really care about repeating this over and over again. Uh, so this was something that the Red Army really wanted to take and, and control while they were trying to fight their way to uh, to control Russia. Well, right now they're facing a, a rather big push from the White Guard. As you can see here, we've got some tank action going on, but they seem to be separating. Yeah, so that's... So much the tank seems to be just rolling his ass backwards and getting and stuck. Yeah, the tank yeah, is the part of the battle. The tank is really trying to hold on here. Yeah, the Red Army really struggling to get any point. Now almost going to get three capped, and we all know that if you're getting three capped in Conquest, the game could end fairly early, so they really need to, to rally back and get onto that point as quickly as possible. I think they've solidified the A capture point now, looking at it again. It doesn't appear to be contested right now, so perhaps they sort of settle back down again, but they really do need to make a push for that cathedral if they want to try and claw their way back in. I think that's the that's the key to this win right here. Anyone who controls B is going to have what is that? that victory. See here, doing some damage against that enemy tank. All the explosives. Oh, was that a wee explosive dart gun? So nice, that's pretty cool. Just one tank on its own. Mm. You know, this is the only vehicle that your that your team's going to have. You really need to try and protect it from enemy infantry. Yeah, it is really just a fantastic sight right there, looking at it from above. You do have some cavalry really trying to come in, maybe do a little bit of harassment there, but this tank is literally just, he doesn't know what to do. He's already pushed all the way back to the out-of-bounds zone, but uh, we are going to be seeing him slowly but surely kind of inching his way up. He's about half health, so he does need to be careful, but, uh, you know, th this is really interesting too because we haven't really seen too much from the other team's tank, so maybe they've kind of just focused on purely just pushing them in terms of impact. Have they actually oh, got a tank? That's the question. At the cathedral right now, you can see the flag is being contested. Both sets of infantry are in here trying to battle it out. And as much as it looks like a building on its own, it is a really large building. This is a great shot here. You can see the full scope of the building now. Yeah, it's absolutely insane, the, the, the size and scope of this building. Not only that, but you do have some vertical gameplay with it because one of the one of the entrances where it's it's crumbled at the side where it's been hit by a shell of some mm -hmm. sort, you can actually get up into sort of the first level of, of buildings around the top. There. Yeah, I actually think that's going to be where uh, the victory too for this point. You know, so when you get to high ground, you can control. It, it does feel like high end tactical play well, that's been done here. Done this is um, is starting to come back. They were is this this is actually makes more sense for Gamescom so where it actually it is, is involved gameplay showing you the action. People who are really into there. it can get super excited about what's going to be done next with the game, what actually is already there, seeing the flaws and certain things interacting with each other. The, the, the new weapons are this feels like as European of a conference as you could possibly get. We're going, like, we're going to go to show you just lying cool shit. We're just going to show you how it works. Just as we suspected when we were building the map that this was going to be the most contentious area. Lots of people pouring into the doors and trying to get, get access to this point. And as you say, like that, you could see just across from each other, there's two sort of entrance doors, and there's one at the rear and at the front. You can almost jump out from the top floor as well. Right. So, so, so you can get in and out any points of in egress or ingress or egress out of the space. But the enemy team doesn't try and come and take it straight back. Yep. At the same time, though, the team in the center has to be careful not to get too concentrated because if you look there, they were taking their back flag. So they yep. need to make sure they kind of spread out, kind of get a little bit... Uh, capturing those points, capturing those points, then, then no longer capturing the points, the, uh, points, points. ...is going to be working for, I believe it was the Red Army, yeah. trying to go ahead and secure those two caps. Yep. You can see here, the, yeah, the Red Army have got control of the A capture point, and I believe they're <laughs> testing... The <laughs> and then threw a grenade in afterwards just to make sure. ...working on it. Oh, and we got a flame trooper right here. So, how many kits do we have for the elite class? Yeah, we actually have three elite classes on here right now. So you can get the flame trooper, and that's around the outskirts of this area here, the perimeter of the cathedral. Uh, you may also find a sentry kit here. We also have a water-cooled uh, LMG uh, sentry kit. That's uh, that's uh, uh, something that will spawn on your headquarters if you can. Control all points. Oh, okay, so there's a third one further away from the edge. Look at all the enemies here. Oh, oh just here we go. Damage. He is going to roast them nice and toasty. Picks up one, picks up a second one potentially here. And he just did a fantastic job of clearing out those players. Will have plenty of health as well, and he's going to re-engage. Fair play. Fantastic job from oh, here Jack we go. here. 
<laughs> a great use of the flame trooper right here. Close I'm guessing quarters. this is what you guys exactly thought would happen with the flamethrower. Like, we'll put it near the cathedral where it's going to be most effective, right? Right in these hallways. Just a perfect use. <laughs> this is great. This is just not even fair right here. He's just going <laughs> just and running train on these guys. But uh, we got two minutes left here on this particular right. map. A little over 100 points down. Another two minutes guard. left. Right. The, white, the white guard is pulling away here. They seem I don't to really have much commentary to say otherwise now in this. The Red Army just suffered a little bit from not being a little bit more aggressive at the start. Trying to contest the Cathedral earlier on. Maybe try and gain a bit more of a foothold in the match. Yep. Absolutely. And you can see right now just so much chaos. You have the above action there from the second level shooting on. Shooting down. from above! The players just trying to scramble and get up there as quickly as possible to clear it out. As uh, we're still following Jack here in the Flame Trooper. Now we're going to be passing it on to Thick. As uh, we will be pushing on him once more. Hmm. No, it's just good. not gonna now, make it. No. This is this is the problem. Like because the uh, the white guard are sitting inside the cathedral, the red army are having a horrible time trying to actually get in. Yeah, but it looks like he's got the tank up close. It's just taking a lot of fire damage here. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing damage to the tank by hitting it with the flamethrower. I was about to say, I was like, there's no way he's gonna take out a tank with a flamethrower here. It might just happen. But he it could it possibly right do here. that. He just did. <laughs> And you can see right now, yeah, just the infantry trying to pour in from the sides, but not able to do so. The tank is kind of baffled as to what to do right here. Uh, he is getting a couple of kills, and but this, this is just not look massive good. craziness going down. <laughs> we're down to the, almost the last half a minute here. Yeah, we're getting really close down to the wire here. The Red Army still trying to break in to the cathedral. They seem to have made a little bit of headway, but they are contesting the flag now. Uh, We're down to the last minute or so, and I've got nothing to say. Just want to let them ramble on or continue on in their description of what's going on. Sorry, guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this but, uh, is not my spare uh, area of here. expertise. In these squads, they're going to try and do everything they possibly can. It's all for pride right here and now. Can they get this B-side? If they Nine. Can just own it. Oh, my just God, yeah. Six seconds left to go before they we are going to be ending it. out here. I think they, they may have it. Oh, I don't think they quite got it. And, and it looks like that was and it. That defeated. Was a, a victory for the white guard. And the war white changed guard history forever. That was that was awesome. Watching the cathedral battle, that was really, really good fun. And it just showcases like how powerful infantry can be against vehicles. Absolutely. Yeah, this is just a glimpse of what you get in, in the name of the Tsar. We are super we excited to see what the, what the community oh, does with it. I need to get a drink of water or something. Feel my voice going. Yeah, and I'm very, very excited once again for the Incursions game mode, which is going to be coming out in closed alpha next month. And of course, we have the Battlefield 1 revolution. Shut up! That's Don't tell me about Battlefield no more packs and seals. Complete package. But that's it from us. Thanks very much for watching the Battlefield 1 segment here at EA Gamescom. Thanks for watching. Bye! Thanks, guys. Battlefield 1 in the name of the Tsar is really intense, but also a ton of fun. Now, we hope that you've enjoyed this view into our biggest experiences coming this year. We showed you a lot of gameplay tonight, but of course, there's so much more. For those of you here in Cologne this week, please join us to go hands-on with many of these I games. know you people at home. And for those of you around <coughs> the world, join us online for more content and live streams from EA and our Game Changers creators. Thanks, oh, that's everyone, right, the Game Changers. That's what they call their peoples. Is that us? All right. Okay. So, Effie, that was it. The only thing that actually really caught my attention this, it was nice to see gameplay footage of that, and it was fun. Um, Sims was going to be adorable, Battlefield, Battlefront is going to be Battlefront, and Battlefield is going to be Battlefield. Oh, and Need for Speed had a really shitty, annoying car. So... Well, the conference down, folks. Another one out of the way. Um, that wasn't actually not too bad. That wasn't too bad to actually enjoy. It was just um, for for what we've actually kind of grown to expect of conferences. Like Gamescom isn't here to actually like show us anything massively mad or new. It's here to actually show us something else. So is that the conference over? Uh, we'll just pause it. There we go. Just pause it on the EA logo. So yeah, guys. Um, let's jump. Let's jump. Joel, you'll jump back to this one. Boom. <laughs> That makes a little bit more sense. So yeah, guys, that was the EA conference for Gamescom 2017. Um, I was just uh, saying what, I, what what we saw in that was Battlefront 2. We saw Fe Fi Fe Fi Fi Fo Fum F E. Uh, we saw Sims 4, Need for Speed, 
and of course Battlefield and it, I think people were giving Xbox a bit of shit about how little they showed in theirs EA didn't really show much more oh yeah they had FIFA 18 as well at the top of it so you're chatting like seven eight games generally being talked about throughout it and Microsoft still had someone else to sell and have someone else to talk about EA wasted a fair amount of time with that BMW M3 promo thing which in the end up, I mean, Microsoft did the same thing with the Porsche. We all give them shit about that. So I'm all happy to give shit to EA for it as well. Gamescom's not showing me anything massively mad or interesting or really, really sna snapping my attention. But um, yeah, the more information about the Battlefield pack, the Revolution one that's coming out. Um, Sims 4's new expansion, Cats and Dogs, which is adorable. And a uh, bunch of other stuff besides. I, 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 there's nothing really that stands out to me in this at all. So I'm pretty sure I'm, I don't think there's any other conferences for Gamescom to actually be done. I might I might break this one in to smaller segments and see how it plays out rather than actually putting the whole thing online. Or I might put the whole thing online, then break it up into segments and then release the segments in some way, shape or form. So um, whoever prefers it, whichever way, if they want to see a bit or they want to see the whole thing, the options are there. So I might throw these all into the, a Gamescom playlist along with the Microsoft ones from earlier on. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you actually enjoyed the videos, uh, make sure to always check out the channel and hit the subscribe button to actually be able to uh, stick around and see all the stuff that we see here on the channel and get news, previews, and uh, reviews on of games here on Pastiche of Skin. Uh, of course, not all of you do the subscribe thing. Completely understand it. That's okay. You don't have to do subscribe. What you can do is just memorize the name. Pastiche of Skin. Not pistachio. Not past itch. Pastiche of skin. If I can teach you anything before this is all over and my channel shuts down and ceases to exist in this world, is that what pastiche means is an imitation or a parody of life. And I just opened that unintentionally. Hmm. Kind of impressive. Okay. Well, that's okay then. <laughs> we'll just leave it as was. Hey, got back on the screen. Um... Yeah, so I've got pasty suppose sounds like uh, the, the other word I can't say in front of this microphone. But uh, yeah, the if you don't do uh, the subscribe thing, you can also do pastiche of skin. You can find me, search for me, find me on the internet. It's not hard to find me in any way, shape, or form. I'm easily available. I'm not trying to hide. I'm right here to entertain you. So come find me. Come see me. Check me out sometime. Let's say hi. Let's go for coffee. Would you like to marry me? I'm not too sure if that's actually a good idea, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, if you send me the right kind of proposal. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. If uh, you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a button up here that'll tell you to subscribe. There'll be boxes over here that will be the Gamescom's playlist. Over here will be recent uploads. Right here will be a video just for you. Or there might be a link to my Patreon. Um, literally at this point now, I'm gonna have to start kind of figuring out what we're changing these around. And might actually be putting the Patreon link somewhere in here instead of one of the boxes for the videos. But there will be a Gamescom playlist. There will be a link and there will be a video sitting along here somewhere. So thank you very much for watching. And I will see all you dudes in the next games conference. Bye.